While Ukrainian drone strikes managed to hit Russian industrial targets deep in the Russian rear, the Russians break through one of the most important defensive positions in Avdivka. They have entered a quarter of the city itself and according to Ukrainian analysts, they are probably in the process of already taking over said quarter, so a big setback in Ukraine's defense of Avdivka. We'll talk about these events and about other events in the that happened over the last few days in Russia's war against Ukraine in this situation report. We'll start off with a Ukrainian drone strike here again close uh, to St. Petersburg here in Ustluga a, a gas installation was hit by a Ukrainian drone strike. The fire burned for several hours. According to reports, uh, gas storage tanks as well as pumping buildings were damaged. By now, the fire is under control and estimates are that the export of liquefied natural gas from Russia will be hindered for probably weeks. Some estimates are maybe even for months. So this was one strike again here in the St. Petersburg region up here almost a thousand kilometer away from Ukraine, but Ukraine also hit targets in Tula and in probably in Smolensk. We have a picture here of an explosion in Tula. According to reports, this was a defense installation involved in the production of air defense systems and uh, missiles. And another strike supposedly hit a target in Smolensk, even though I have not seen visual evidence of this. So while Ukraine has managed to hit the Russian rear. The uh, Cheka channel, this is one of the uh, insider military um, mill bloggers from Russia who has good connections to the Russian intelligence agencies, said that in the region of St. Petersburg, the Russians clearly didn't expect Ukrainian strikes. So the air defense there is weak. And what air defense is there is oriented towards NATO, not towards basically the rear of the, Ru the Russian rear, as those drones would basically come from the a direction of Moscow. This means that to defend against future attacks by the Ukrainians, the Russians will have to re either redeploy air defenses in the positions there and thus weaken them themselves in regards to NATO, or they have to send additional air defenses and thus the Ukrainians will manage to fix additional air defenses in places far away from the front line. But let's go to the front line itself. Here on the eastern front north of the Sivetsky Donetsk, the fighting is obviously continuing. The Russians keep up their pressure towards Kupiansk and they recently gained some ground here in the area of Ivanivka where they managed to push back the Rus the Ukrainians by a few hundred meters. The biggest success of the Russians is though the capture of that whole area. In the last situation report we talked that the Ukrainians had admitted that they lost the, the um, tree lines here along the railroad line that you can see here and that fresh reports were coming about the supposed capture of the town of uh, Krochmalne. Now it is confirmed that the Russians don't just control Krochmalne, they also managed to advance along the, whole, the road several kilometers to the north. So in total the Ukrainians lose a fair amount of square kilometers in this point and one of their main uh, communication lines to the front line in the direction of Svatove, which will obviously weaken this area here as well. And uh, the Russians keep the pressure up to and keep increase the pressure on the northeastern part of that front line here, where Ivanivka is already has already been under pressure over the last few days. The Ukrainians were expecting a uh, renewed offensive in this area, but not at that exact area supposedly the attacks were more from expected from the direction of uh, Persho Travneve and from Orlyanka as we've seen Russian attacks a lot of Russian attacks in these directions here recently and this attack now su apparently surprised the Ukrainians and managed to push them back quite significantly.
Further south, the Ukrainians are reporting a massing of Russian troops in the direction of Liman, which is here. So in the area of Krimina, the Russians are adding additional troops, including serious amounts of heavy weaponry, meaning artillery, tanks and IFVs, to renew their offensive in this direction as well. It is expected that the Russian goal is to reach the Oskil River as a next goal after firstly reaching the Sheribetsk at every part of the front line. In some parts, as you can see here, they have already crossed it a couple of months ago, but their immediate goal will likely be to first reach the Sherebets River and then to go further west to the Oskil. South of the Siversky Donetsk, the Ukrainians report additional attacks on Bilohorivka. The Russians confirm that, but the Russian mill bloggers themselves admit that there was no success that they had there. The attacks are also at Spirne and Vesele, and in this area here, and while we have reports about additional fighting in Bodanivka, even the Russians admit that the Ukrainians still control at least one third of the town. So the recent reports that uh, that Bodanivka had fallen to the Russians are clearly false. Even the Russians admit that. The Russians have advanced, though, in the area directly north of Klishivka. There is a geolocalization about a Russian attack that is uh, failing. The Ukrainians hit tanks and the crew then runs away and flees and it was geolocalized here. This is the position right roughly right here. So while the map here sh still shows it in green, meaning under full Ukrainian control, the video indicates that there don't seem to be Ukrainian soldiers in that tree line anymore. So likely the contested area is now extended probably until here. This forested area, according to my information, is still solidly in Ukrainian hand. Hence, so the front line is probably moving somewhere like this right now, which would mean that all of this seems likely to be to be taken out of Ukrainian control, even though this one attack clearly has failed. But as I said, we do not see any Ukrainian presence in that tree line in those videos anymore. Further south at Avdivka, we have additional fighting as well. The, you, the Russians report meeting engagements here at Step. Uh, Stepove, meaning both sides clashing with each other by um, maneuvering around there, but no change in territory, no change in territory close to the coke plant as well. But we have a Ukrainian loss here close to Kamyanka. The Russians are now confirmed to have entered this area here. And while it's green, this is actually not a forested area. This is a Dacha area that is close to Avdivka as well. And we know that the Russians probably control the whole of it already so they managed to gain quite some ground in this area as well but while this is unpleasant this isn't the biggest problem yet the problem is in the southeast there the russians are reporting that they are advancing into this area here into the um, building area and i seem to have some ukrainian confirmation about this i cannot confirm the extent of that advance but they seem to be pushing in this the bigger one is this here though there the russians managed to take over the tsarska Achota restaurant, which was here. This was one of the strong points of the Ukrainian defense in the south or southeast of um, the, the Avdivka salient. And the Russians haven't just entered this part of the town. They actually advanced completely through it. We see a fresh geolocalization basically showing them already up here. And as you can see, Deep State map, which is pro-Ukrainian, has already um, adjusted the map to put the whole quarter here under a contested area. And we have this here, a Ukrainian mill blogger saying that they advanced along the Sobornaya Street and um, the, the Ukrainian armed forces will probably have to withdraw from it to the ninth uh, quarter. So this area is probably going to fall to the Russians within the next 24 to 48 hours. The Russians have also confirmed, it's also confirmed that the Russians took over the rest of the Dutchess east of this. Here was still some Ukrainian presence. It was still in the contested area, meaning the front line is probably somewhere around this here now or by now. And the entering Russian forces have entered 
Avdivka proper. This is still no high rises in this area. It's um, one family, small one family homes, but still it's Avdivka itself. And now the house to house fighting in Avdivka has definitely started. A big setback for the Ukrainians and an advance by the Russians of at least 1.5 kilometer in this area. A Ukrainian military spokesperson said the Russians have concentrated over 40,000 soldiers in this area, in addition, obviously, to heavy weaponry. And uh, the Ukrainian military expects a renewal of the Russian offensive here. So we should see significantly more fighting or not to say even more fighting, even more Russian attacks on Avdivka. The battle for Avdivka itself, for the town itself, seems to have started now, whereas until now, at least, we've only been in the outskirts. Now the Russians have entered Avdivka itself. The fighting is also being reported in the direction of, of Pervomaiske and in the direction of Siverne. Here, on the other hand, I do not, I'm not able to confirm any change in territory, even though it seems likely that the Ukrainians are soon going to lose this, uh, this bulge here into the front line, as their line of communication here is already under threat. And at least according to what we've seen last, it seems like the Ukrainians are doing a fighting withdrawal from this area to uh, re-establish fresh positions further west. So we should expect this to fall within the next couple of days. Further south at Marinka, the Russians are confirming that they did heavy attacks on Novo Mikhailivka from the south, but they themselves say we were not successful. So as of now, no change in territory in this area overall that can be confirmed. Fighting is also has also renewed in the area south of Velika Novosilka. The most important things are that the Russians managed to actually advance somewhat on Uroshine. They managed to, to take over control over those two tree lines here directly southeast of the town. The Ukrainians have counterattacked and have recaptured it. And we actually have a Russian mill blogger saying that in the in the Vuledar section here, the Ukrainian armed forces became active. As a result of the counterattack, they managed to occupy a number of new positions in the area. So if I'm not misunderstanding it, it might actually be that they managed to not just recapture the positions they previously held, which are indicated here. They have just lost it, I think, two days ago to the Russians. But it might be possible that they advanced over that further to the southeast and have gained additional ground, even though it's probably fairly limited. But here, at least, the Ukrainians have been somewhat successful. Further to the west at Orichiv, we have additional fighting being reported. Russian mill bloggers are writing that the Russians are attacking or towards Robot Robotine, whereas the Ukrainians are, are attacking towards Verbove. And Wargonzo, one of the bigger Russian mill bloggers, is saying both sides are fighting for the initiative. This would be an indication that neither side has a significant advantage in strength of the attacks. Um, so giving us the impression that the situation there isn't as defensive and as one-sided as it seemed over the last few weeks. So apparently the Ukrainians, when it comes to their um, attacks, are still strong enough to, to be able to contest the initiative for that area. For the West to the, uh, I have no fresh fighting being reported. The fighting is obviously continuing on the bridgehead over the Dnipro. There are heavy attacks of, of the Russians towards Krinki here. Russians themselves confirm it, but they themselves, the mill bloggers I see, uh, are not claiming to have achieved any successes. So it seems like we do not have any changes in the control of Krinki that um, over the last few days that can be recorded and confirmed. Overall, we have one bigger news as well. The Ukrainians, or there was an attack on a market in the southwest of Donetsk city itself. Videos have circled around showing corpses lying on the, on the ground. Supposedly, this was an attack on a market. The Russian authorities say there were, was no military personnel there. From the videos I've seen, I didn't see any military either. Um, the reports were at least two dozen, dozen people dead uh, that have died there. Um, either all of them or most of them civilians. Ukraine, on the other hand, is saying we didn't do this. Now, while there is a theoretic possibility of a Russian 
shell or missile falling short. The reports are again and again and now and then with video proof that about civilian casualties inside of Donetsk. I don't think it's it, it seems fairly unlikely that it is 100% falling short shells. While there might be no military sense whatsoever to shell Donetsk in, in an area where there are no Russian positions and at least at that point there were no visible on the video evidence, it seems possible that some local commanders now and then try to do revenge attacks on the Russian positions there on the Russian held territory. At least that seems to be the most likely explanation. In this case, we can definitely confirm that there were civilian casualties with very likely an artillery attack. Where the shells were coming from, I cannot confirm, but we have to say the most likely the reason for that is probably from the Ukrainian from the Ukrainian side of the front line. Even though, as said, Ukraine is denying that its military shot at that. In troop generation for terms, we have um, a, a Russian company giving us this video, and they are, the company's name is Hyder X, and it's from Russia, and they are announcing they are going to produce a camouflage um, cover for the soldiers, as we can see here, that gives full protection for thermal vision. This is um, showing the difference in a promo promotional video. The company is saying the testing will be finished at the end of the month and it's going to be completely sourced and produced within Russia, meaning that it's independent from foreign sanctions, etc. And it's almost ready for serial production. The whole clothing is only 350 grams. So according to them, it would theoretically be possible to give it to every Russian soldier. We'll obviously have to see how much of this holds true, how much of this is propaganda, and to which scale they'll be able to produce it. But at least they claim they found a solution to thermal vision observation in this case. In international news, we have in a political sphere, the, the Denmark and the United States have signed a military agreement you, that, which allows the US to station troops permanently inside of Denmark. Uh, Russia is obviously not pleased about this and China has now uh, confirmed the data says that in 2023, last year, China bought more 24% more crude oil from Russia than in 2022 and 23% more liquefied natural gas from Russia as well. So China has in massively increased its import of carbohydrates from Russia last year. A survey in Ukraine among Ukrainians, ha uh, among Ukrainian refugees has said that according to that, 63% of the Ukrainians that have fled the country after the war started have already returned so almost two-thirds and 64 percent of those remaining outside of the country have plans to return um, in those are the survey numbers that i've seen um, and we'll have to see how much this the the intention to increase the military will be uh, will have an influence to that as the reports are that i think up to 800,000 ukrainian men in fighting age are outside of ukraine and not going back to ukraine as of now um, also, in December 2023, Ukraine has exported more grain than in any single month th since the beginning of the war. This is obviously a sensational success by the Ukrainian armed forces and its almost non-existent navy that the Russian Black Sea Fleet, which is vastly superior in every regard, was pushed back so far from the Western Black Sea that it allowed the Ukrainians to restart the export even without Russian agreement to that. We've heard about the Ukrainians sinking ships in the area, taking back Snake Island and uh, taking down observation posts on um, drilling platforms west of the Crimean Peninsula, together with storm shadow attacks on ships in harbors, together with raids on the Crimean Peninsula itself and missile attacks on installations. The Ukrainians managed to push the Russian Black Sea Fleet so far back to the east that they can basically restart export the export of grain, which is so essential for
for the Ukrainian economy without any problems. And this is also important in international terms as not only does it help um, keep down food prices worldwide, it also eases the pressure on the markets in Romania and Poland where there were riots of farmers that were uh, threatened in their existence by dumped Ukrainian grain in their markets. Now with the exports being resumed and with their volume increasing, this is obviously easing that situation as well. The um, it, it, Zelensky, the Ukrainian president, has signed a de decree according to which, uh, in, in regards to previously Ukrainian settled regions, and he said basically today we need to take measures not only to uh, strengthen the unity of Ukraine and our people, but also to protect our rights and freedoms and the truth about Ukrainians and the truth about us and our history to protect that. Um, according to the decree, plans are supposed to be created to strengthen and protect the identity of Ukrainians living outside of Ukraine and it's in regard to previously Ukrainian settled regions. This is a map indicating about which the talk is about and obviously Russian mill bloggers are taking this as a Ukrainian claim to their territory as obviously they, they themselves justify claims on their neighboring countries by claiming it is originally Russian settled territory. So according to this, according to Russian mill bloggers, Ukraine would be claiming this territory now inside of Russia. But we have to emphasize the wording doesn't say anything like this. So the Ukraine as of now has not claimed a single inch of, of Russian territory that is, um, that is actually Russian and not just annexed by the Russians in the last um, eight years in the last 10 years, excuse me. Um, in troop generation, we have news from Ukraine as well. The, the Ukrainian president said that in the future, foreign volunteers will have the chance to get Ukrainian citizenship, while at the same time, dual citizenship will be allowed. Until now, Ukrainians, uh, fresh Ukrainians, new, after the naturalization in the process, they would be forced to give up the citizenship of their country of origin. This will be changed to allow soldiers fighting for Ukraine, like they are Ukrainians, to get the citizenship without giving up their own. The only exclusion from that is the Russian citizenship, which was to be expected. He also said, the Ukrainian president, that the 500,000 additional soldiers that the military asked for, he does not see the need for them yet. So according to him, Ukraine will not mobilize an additional 500,000 soldiers, at least in the short term. And in international uh, context, we have the Polish president being in and a prime minister, I think it was the prime minister, excuse me, in, in Ukraine. And he's, he, he announced a fresh military aid package. So, you, so Ukraine still has Poland strongly at its side and uh, will receive additional military support in the near future. That was already it from me for now. If you like this report, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps with the algorithm. Leave a comment in the comment section what do you think about the current situation and how long do you think will Avdivka be able to hold out against the renewed Russian pressure. If you're new here, I would like to invite you to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so you don't miss future videos. And this channel is only possible because of the support of viewers like you. If you like to support the channel, you can do so by the means in the description. Thank you very much to everyone already supporting this channel. And that's it from me for now. Thank you for watching and I'll be back.